Hello, everyone. My name is Chingir. I'm a worker specialist at JVS Toronto. I hope you're safe and sound. It is April 2020. Uh, I'm one week of remote work. And uh, yeah, I hope you're like me, uh, trying to stay sane uh, in these unusual circumstances. But anyways, today I want to talk about content creation. Uh, I know that everybody right now is online and many people are overwhelmed with the amount of information, but I think it's a good time for everyone to start asking themselves a question. Uh, like, am I a content creator or am I a content consumer? So today I just want to share uh, my three reasons why I decided to become a content creator. So jumping right in, my main three reasons. Oops, this bubble is too big. Make it smaller. Uh, my, my personal three reasons is that content creation, I consider it as a self-development tool. And today we talk about, we're going to talk about a couple of skills. Uh, I think that content creation is a great networking tool. And I also think that content creation can become potentially a very nice uh, income stream. Although that's not my primary motivation. So let's jump right in. Content creation is a self-development tool, right? Um, as I said, um, you can see what's happening right now, especially on LinkedIn and on other platforms like YouTube as well. More and more uh, content is consumed. So there is a, definitely a need, right? Uh, and it is always in this kind of uh, distraction economy when everyone is try fighting for your attention, right? Uh, logically, people who have this ability to grab attention and to deliver value online uh, they will be, this kind of ability, this kind of skill will always be appreciating, right? So uh, I'm focusing mostly here on three skills. It's like writing, digital marketing, and video content. So we'll talk about writing and video content. Uh, I guess they also kind of included inside the digital marketing. But why do, I want, why do I focus so much on digital marketing these days is because great ideas, um, I mean, let's say, regardless of how good is the idea, right? It can only thrive in the environment um, that is um, benign for the development of this idea, right? Um, no, matter, no matter how good you are, no matter how smart and intelligent you are, if you place your idea in the wrong environment and if you do not uh, think as a marketer, right? Your idea might not uh, be, uh, might not reach, let's say, and achieve the goal, right? So talking about writing, uh, this is a post, actually it was just last week by Jordan Peterson, our beloved uh, professor in Toronto. Uh, just gonna read it fast, I'm sure he'll do it faster, but he says, the most necessary skill for students and future leaders is the ability to write. There is little difference between writing and thinking, at least verbal thinking. So to write is to think. To think is to avoid obstacles and capitalize on the opportunity at hand. To think is to set things straight. To think is to convince and explain. What you write, you remember. What you merely recognize, you're merely familiar with. Multiple choice tests generally reward recognition memory, which is uh, which must is much shallower than recall memory, which writing facilitates. If you write something, then you know it well enough to talk about it, so you can then speak about it even publicly. So, uh, in, I would say like there is a comment about the first paragraph to think is to set things straight. I think the writing is the method to set things straight, right? When we think it, it happens like in the, in the real time, right? But when we write, we have an ability to juggle our ideas, to reorganize them, to understand what's um, like if you put all your beliefs or convictions on the paper, you can start uh, dissecting them, dissecting your mind and understand uh, whether it's a functional belief it's, or it's absolutely not working for you and uh, it's useless and you, you need to declutter your mind, you need to delete it, you need to try to substitute it with a belief that is working, right? Uh, now, this is why personally I choose to write. Is, um, there's another, uh, another benefit from writing is that, especially right now, with being overwhelmed with all these thoughts, writing becomes your therapist, right? When you write, you create this space inside your head. You don't own, like, you know, it's like a laundry machine rotating, dirty laundry. You just stop it, you remove everything from there, you put it on the paper, and once it's uh, obtained a physical form, uh, you start worrying about, you stop worrying about it, right? It doesn't occupy the space. 
uh, I want to talk about video content creation as well, right? Uh, to be is equal to do, and we all want to be more confident, more assertive people. So I think, like personally for me, video content creation is exactly that way. It's a, it's a quest for confidence, and those people who are on the quest for confidence, uh, they will be processing all those funny feelings all those things that come with video content creation. The feeling awkward on camera, shaky voice. You don't, you don't know how many times I started this video. Right now, I just go with the flow. Uh, being cautious about your appearance, right? Uh, right now, I'm thinking, oh, my, my hair is messy. I didn't cut my hair for one month. Uh, fighting imposter syndrome. Oh, I'm not good enough. Uh, like, I don't have expertise in the field. I have nothing to say. There are people who are more, way more intelligent, way more good looking. Uh, that can say and like all those uh, kind of funny thoughts yeah if you have them that's imposter syndrome fear of being judged what will people say right and i love this uh, comment also it's actually uh, a hashtag do eat scared and it's a mindset that it represents right and she uh fanny donegan like easily i never met her but she's easily one of my fa most favorite people on linkedin and uh, that's what she said. Fear stops us, right? It holds us back. We feel that we're not good enough. We fear, we have fear of being judged. We fear of saying the wrong thing. And the fact is, if you have something of value to say, uh, we need to do it. We have to speak up, right? But before that, and we're going to return to this, right? We need to make sure that what we say is actually of value. Um, going back to number two, content creation as a networking tool. Also, another quote by Fanny Donegan that I absolutely love. People know you before they met you. That's the beautiful thing about, about content creation, about a personal brand. Once you create your image there, uh, your persona, right? And you put, start putting content out there, uh, people start to familiarize themselves with the way you think, the way you um, formulate your thoughts, and where you stand, your position in life. And uh, yeah, this is uh, how people can discover you. For example, a piece of content, piece of one, like one article that I uh, wrote like three years ago in 2017, I still have uh, people up to date right now contacting me because of it. And not, uh, it's interesting because like I found many, many very, uh, yeah, many very interesting people around the world and I made good connections. Um, this is the book that I've just finished. I'm gonna be making a book review a little bit later. But if you're not familiar with the work of Carl Newport, because he has three books, um, Digital Minimalism, Deep Work, is so good they can ignore it. Uh, for this particular book, yeah, we're gonna be, I'm gonna be making a new series, book reviews. But if you, if you wanna be good, so good that no one can ignore you, I very much recommend you to explore his work. So he's introducing, Carl Newport is introducing the concept of career capital, right? And what is career capital? Basically, it's an accumulation of your uh, rare and valuable skills. Uh, once you start, uh, start progressing in your career, you start accumulating this knowledge, right? And then eventually, all this, you become so rare and your, your, your skills are so rare, so valuable that uh, they, uh, you can cash them in, you can exchange them for the traits that define uh, unique work, yeah. And I would say, in simple terms, you can you cash them in to secure your dream job on your own terms. The more valuable and rare your skills are, the more you can dictate uh, the way your career progresses, your work, right? So, what is the relation to connections? Like connections themselves may not be like necessarily go under the definition of career capital, right? But in order to have those connections, I think this entails a lot of very valuable skills. First of all, in order to establish connection, you need, you need to be able to network. Uh, it is called approaching people, which means you need to have certain level, develop certain level of confidence, right? The way, the way you approach them, uh, being able to, being humble, uh, being modest, being uh, polite, right? building initial reports, being able to create this comfortable conversation, make another person open. Uh, it's negotiation, it's maintaining online relationships, and most importantly, an ability to translate these online relationships into the real world. How do we carry them? How do we make them uh, more human, right? 
So I think um, connections and networking is uh, con contributing to your career capital, right? And this is very important if you think uh, in the future, in the long run, like to uh, to find yourself in a place where where your work, uh, like you will be defining the, all the conditions for the work, more control, or as James also shared that said that. Yeah, he was interviewing Carl Newbert. He puts it beautifully and shortly. Acquire this career capital and then leverage it, right? And this is how you can get autonomy. Autonomy, it means you have more control. And when we have more control, the workplace, we have more fulfillment. We have our sense of meaning is in a different realm. It's much higher. So, uh, yeah, to summarize, I would say content creation uh, uh, lets you network more effectively and develop those skills um, talking to people human interpersonal relationship communication skills right uh, all those skills that i think contributes the value of your career capital uh, last thing and the third one is content creation uh, can be potential income stream right oops one second uh, sorry about that yes john Get back to it. Content creation is a potential income stream. So in 2008, um, there was an article published by um, this gentleman. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, just give me a second. Yeah. So if you go to the article, um, uh, sorry, to the link that I've posted right here, right? Uh, this is the concept of 1,000 uh, true friends. Oh, it's true, true, true fans. Give me a moment. Uh, yes, uh, gentleman's name is Kevin Kelly. Sorry, just slipped my mind. Uh, he's the um, he's the founder of Wired Magazine, and he he's uh, like amazing thought leader and futurist. I think he's very accurate in his predictions. So in 2008, he posted this article where he's presenting this concept of 1,000 true friends which is saying basically that in order to sustain yourself financially, all you need is to accumulate a fan base of 1,000 true fans who are willing to pay for your work. So uh, yeah, simple math, if you have 1,000 fans and everyone is paying you 50 to $100 a year, that's a 50 to 100K income a year, which is uh, fairly living for m most of folks, right? Um, what I'm trying to say here, I guess, is uh, this is one of the way, if you're really into all right, kind of creating, um, thinking about creating a movement and becoming one day a thought leader yourself, making a change, making an impact, right? And then eventually being able to sustain yourself. I think um, definitely that's a, that's a concept that you must entertain. Um, other ways to leverage your personal brand, of course, is to sell yourself if you have some products or services. If you work for the company, you can enforce the brand of the company you work for. I'm pretty sure your boss will say thank you. And affiliate marketing, right? You can partner with others, and this is what many YouTubers do. Uh, however, there is one caveat, the one that we've been talking before, right? Uh, content creation, I don't think that it's for everyone, and I don't think that everyone should be a content creator. And first and foremost, for uh, this um, uh, kind of the mindset, right? of uh, can I deliver, uh, it's, it's all about the question of can I deliver value, right? You need, to be, you need to make sure that it's a quality work, it's conscientious work, and only after that probably you can proceed. But for those there who are still thinking and still hesitating, I should say, yes, you are enough. If you know absolutely sure that you can deliver value, if you can change people's lives, it actually it becomes your responsibility to do so. Don't stay away from it. Go out there, expose yourself, do something. Right now, like I like uh, last week, I was a tech, uh, two weeks ago, I was attending Techio and I, there was one founder of a startup and he said a beautiful thing. He said, right now, this is the times when uh, you don't, there are no many criteria for being a leader. If you have compassion, you can be a leader. That's, uh, I think that's something to really meditate on. And, uh, I want to challenge you. Um, and I think there are many things in my life that are implemented using this 30 days challenge. There is a TED talk on, um, on YouTube to take a look. I didn't put it here. To create content, 
every day for 30 days straight. Like this is uh, this sounds like something hard, but right now we really we just realized right in self isolation that there is no such an excuse. Like I don't have time for that. Now right now you have time for everything, and if after the lockdown you don't go out from it with new skills, like something was fundamentally wrong with the way you spending your time. So uh, it doesn't have to be great your content, right? It just has to obtain a physical form, and then it will transform you. So for example. I'm telling you from my personal experience how I got myself into writing. Uh, I had my experience with a with a startup and uh, failed, which I was running for two years. And then once everything collapsed, I was a bit in a low place. So I started to write, right? And uh, my my initial goal was to publish uh, 30 essays on Medium after like during 30 days. In 30 days, I ended up publishing 42 and. Uh, I'm sharing this not to boast, but to give you kind of uh, an, uh, an insight because one, someone asked me this question, like, what do I do uh, with writing? And I think the most important things are uh, be consistent and, um, yeah, you just need to write. You just need to hone your craft, right? So what I'm saying is it's like this four, first 41 essays, they went completely under radar. There was no uh, attention to it at all. Right, but the 42nd was a breakthrough and it got like thousands of views. So yeah, it started as a challenge and then I decided to write a book. And right now I put my book for free. Please feel free to read it. It's on Medium. It's called Meditations of Millennial. Uh, I don't know. I just tried to kind of accumulate all the knowledge. So please proceed with your own challenges. Uh, try to implement changes. Um, I hope it's going to be content creation and I believe that you will be able to deliver quality, high quality uh, content. Entertain, educate, inspire. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.